Some people will encourage you to feel your feelings and explore your feelings and trust your feelings. But when you have PTSD from childhood and you get emotionally dysregulated, this is the dirty secret. Feeling your feelings is like not always a good thing. You're not supposed to say that, right? But sometimes your feelings are more like a horrible house guest who makes a big mess and refuses to leave. Or it's like, they're like a tornado. They're just like spinning around, wrecking everything. You don't want that. With complex PTSD, what is often a symptom is emotional dysregulation. Feelings are out of control. They're coming out in bursts. They're out of proportion to what's going on, or they're coming at an inappropriate time, like crying at work or having an angry outburst at a customer service representative on the phone. Have you ever done that? Ugh. It also refers to going flat emotionally, and this happens sometimes too. A big spike in feeling and then mm, nothing. But either way, when your feelings are dysregulated, you end up saying things and doing things that, that just overwhelm you further, that actually create new trauma that makes your situation even harder. It can be a vicious circle. One example could be having an argument with your partner, okay? Let's say something makes you angry and they forgot that you had plans to have dinner or something. And you go to meet them, you're at the restaurant and they never show up. They don't answer their phone and you feel stupid and humiliated just sitting there and the feelings start to sort of well up and this abandonment feeling starts going and eventually you go home where you find that they're sitting right there watching TV and you say, where were you? And they go, oh my gosh, I totally forgot. I'm so sorry. Can we go out now? But for you, it's way too late, right? Because old feelings of being ignored and abandoned are just coming up like a gusher out of the past and filling your chest and your head and getting stood up. Yeah, it's not cool, but your reaction is way out of proportion to what happened, even though in the moment it feels totally real to you. Have you ever done this? And then you throw them out of the house or you make an ultimatum or you get your suitcase out of the closet and start packing it. This is what I mean by making things worse because now you're not just dealing with disappointment and hurt, but you're, you're trying to end your relationship over you know somebody forgetting dinner. And even if your partner is used to this and sticks around, this kind of behavior gradually drains away love and trust. You could actually count it as emotional abuse and it closes off connection that otherwise would be deepening and getting sweeter over time. And that's really what we want. So you'll find that if you can control the emotions before they get intense, and you may have a very short opportunity to do that, you can avoid a lot of the problems that come from overreactions and overwhelm. And it's easier then to get back to a calm and regulated state. So I have a friend who visualizes emotional dysregulation as an airplane taking off and regulating this is what she calls keeping the airplane on the ground. I gotta keep the airplane on the ground. <laughs> so here are some tricks to calm your emotions and keep your airplane on the ground, all right? You can stay regulated even when you're upset if you understand what's happening and you practice, 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 all right? So this is about emotional dysregulation. So when you go into a strong emotional reaction, Notice it's happening. Are you flooding with emotion? Are you feeling adrenaline? Are you panicking? Are you starting to cry? So say to yourself, I'm having an emotional reaction. Just doing that is very powerful. You're beginning to get sovereignty over your emotional state. Slow the interaction down. If it's a conversation with someone that's triggering you, pause, think, prepare to see things in a new way. A lot of the time, simply slowing things down can reduce the overwhelm. And less overwhelm means that you can recover your perspective on the situation and experience a little calming effect inside. All right. If you're about to cry and you don't want to, here's a great trick. You can imagine a knob on your stomach, sort of like the gas knob on a stove, and it goes from one to 10. And imagine that the tears are coming because you accidentally left the knob at about eight. And then dial it back down to two, just down on your tummy. If it's anger that you're feeling, you can use what used to be called restraint of pen and tongue. This is the wisest thing I ever learned. It means don't say anything or send a text when you're angry. What happens is this venting will escalate your emotional overwhelm. Your thinking gets distorted. You may say things that you don't actually believe and that you'll regret. And instead, because it's important to express yourself, you can promise yourself that you'll express yourself later when you're calm. So when you're upset, 
restrain pen and tongue, pull back, find a gentle, polite way to postpone any more conversation until you're ready. If the need to say something feels urgent, this is the time to not say anything for even longer. <laughs> say nice things like, can we talk about this in 30 minutes? Can I call you back? All right, another thing, do some emergency writing. Now I teach a technique called the daily practice, writing fears and resentments. I teach it, I put the link to a free course. It's a short course, you can learn it in less than an hour and the link is under every video I put up here. These are the techniques that completely pulled me out of the pit of my, P my CPTSD techniques. So I teach them to everybody. You might really like them. You can get your fear and resentment on paper. And the great thing is you can do this just about anywhere. You can do it in the bathroom, in the dark of a movie theater. You can do it in the car, in bed in the middle of the night, or even at a desk while you pretend to be working. Now, I'm not saying you should pretend to work, but sometimes it's better to do that than to have an emotional meltdown. If it can help you get out of emotional dysregulation, it is time well spent. Then get some hard exercise to kind of rinse out all those stress chemicals from your body. You can run up and down a flight of stairs if you have to, you can do some squats, you can walk briskly around the block. Another thing is just drink some water. Sometimes we're, we're not hydrated very well and while that's not really why we're dysregulated, it always helps to be hydrated. It helps to kind of do whatever it is you, you are doing and it's got, it gives a sensation that brings you back into your body. Uh, another thing, you can wash your hands or take a shower, a cold shower if necessary. These are part of the standard re-regulating techniques, but they're really good for emotional regulation too. Anything that gets you out of the hypnotic trance of believing your dark thoughts. Part of your awareness needs to stay outside of that trance and sort of tap you on the shoulder and say, come on, let's get out of this. Let's get out of the dysregulated state and come back to reality. If you feel like it and if it's available to you, you can talk with a person you trust to get some perspective when you're emotionally dysregulated. But I don't recommend trying to tell a long story. Getting into a hard conversation with somebody when you're already emotionally dysregulated is likely to dysregulate you even more and very likely the person you're talking to is also going to get dysregulated and then really nothing good can come of that. So you don't want that. Everything that needs to be said can and should be said, but it doesn't necessarily have to be in that moment. If you possibly can, wait until you're regulated again, till you're calmer, clearer, able to feel the range of feelings you have about someone and not just the anger, not frantic, not trying to get them to understand something desperately. All right. When you're re-regulating your emotions and the intense thoughts keep fluttering in, just keep reminding yourself to hold the thought and instead focus on next steps, positive actions, positive words. This isn't toxic positivity, right? Where you just deny that there's anything wrong and just say everything's great. This is redirecting your thoughts to a clear mental space, not suppressing your feelings, just postponing their expression until you're a little more regulated. And contrary to popular belief, you don't have to talk about things to get regulated. Talking about your feelings, it is important. There is a time and a place for it. And sometimes that best time and place is later when it's gonna be helpful and constructive and when it will help you have and keep the relationships with loved ones that you treasure, even though it doesn't feel like that when you're emotionally dysregulated. So when this happens, just keep reminding yourself by silently telling yourself, I'm feeling dysregulated. So use your tools to stop the venting. Remind yourself that you don't need to express yourself and clear the air right then. Your words will be there. Your feelings will be there waiting for you when you're calmer when you're not dysregulated. And then when you express yourself, you can do it elegantly with fairness and love. And it'll feel great to keep your relationship gentler like that, to get past the shame of overreaction and to enjoy the way that your connections with other people, rather than getting ruined, they are starting to get deeper and they're starting to get better over time. So here's a video I picked out for you that will help you keep going on healing your dysregulation. And I'll see you over in that video.